Now he begins here, what it's written, that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondmaid, the one by a free maid. And he says, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Now, the law of that day, the Code of Hammurabi in Abraham's day, said that a son of a slave woman is a slave. So that Ishmael was born a slave in the home of Abraham, though he was a son of Abraham. But here the free woman was by promise. Now, you see that Isaac was a miracle child. That is, his birth was miraculous. Abraham could not have a son, And Paul says in Romans that the womb of Sarah was dead. That is, she just couldn't have a child. The womb of Sarah was a tomb. And out of death, God brought life, if you please. The birth of Isaac was not only a birth, it was a resurrection. And it was miraculous. Now, Paul makes a contrast here between the two. He says, which things are, that is, Paul is going to draw a lesson from it. It contains an allegory, for these are the two covenants. Now, what are the two covenants? The one from Mount Sinai, the law, which gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar. And he compares Hagar to Mount Sinai, the law. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Now, Jerusalem, here is the earthly Jerusalem. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. And that Jerusalem is the new Jerusalem that's presented to us in the 20th chapter of Revelation that comes down from God out of heaven. For it's written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. And actually, from Isaac there came more than ever came from Hagar, of course. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Now, our birth is a new birth. And that birth comes about by the fact God has promised. Where? John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him... God says, if you'll trust him, you'll be born again. Born not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Of the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it's now. And my friend, legalism hates the gospel. The gospel of the free grace of God. Legalism hates it. And you'll get in trouble. When I first started in the ministry, first ordained, an elder came to me one day after I'd preached a sermon on prophecy. And I said, you know, prophecy will get you in trouble. And he said to me, now, Vernon, you're mistaken. Preaching prophecy will never get you in trouble. It'll get you a good crowd, generally. People like to hear prophecy. But he says, if you preach the grace of God, you're going to get in trouble. Now, that's the reason today the gospel is trimmed as it is. I don't mean to complain, but I hear very little gospel in these days. I mean of the pure grace of God, and I know why. Because you get clubbed on the head. You'll be surprised the number of letters I'm going to get from this broadcast today. If people say, now, wait a minute. You are to do something else. My friend, you got everything that God has to offer you in Jesus Christ. If I may use the common colloquialism, you get the whole ball of wax when you come to Christ and accept him. Don't tell me I have to seek something after I've been saved from some other source, for instance, even the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit takes the things of Christ and shows them unto us. And that's what it means to call Christ a curse, to come and tell me, that I have to do something or go through something or seek something that I did not get when I came and trusted Jesus Christ. Listen to him. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it's now. The natural man hates the gospel of the grace of God. 
It's in us to hate it because it doesn't require anything of us. It glorifies Christ and turns our eyes to him. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. And God is saying to you and me today, you get rid of every bit of your legalism and put all the emphasis on Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Have you really trusted Christ? Are you carrying a spare tire on your little omnibus that today you feel like that you're doing something or being something or trying to attain to something adds to what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. If you do, forget it and look to Christ alone and receive everything from him. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our God. He is to receive all praise and all glory.